Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul, and in this Rick to the Come video, we're going to be further discussing the Ryzen processor rumours concerning the X390 platform. Some results, some benchmarks have popped up onto the internet, so we'll go into those in just a moment, as well as further discussing the Vega lineup of graphics cards, because some more information has uh, emerged concerning the memory configurations of these pro uh, graphics processors, as well as the release date. But first things first, let's discuss some Sysoft Sandra results which have popped up um, on the 12 core 24 thread Ryzen CPU. Very important to note that these are not server based results, they are for the desktop and we know that because of the fairly lengthy code name. It is an engineering sample, most likely this is not the final uh, qualification sample, in other words the final silicon which will then be turned into the chips that we see on our store shelves, instead it's probably like one or two generations behind that. With that said, it is sporting a couple of very interesting things. The first is a new socket and the second is a turbo speed of just 3.2 gigahertz. Now is it because it's only 3.2 gigahertz because A, it's an engineering sample, or B, that's the target clock speed? Well, shrug. Unfortunately we just don't know yet. However, this is a new entry, it was created excuse me, on the 24th of March this year of course. And this chip is four processor cores shy of the 16 core model that we keep seeing uh, being rumoured across the internet, which of course once again is on the X390 platform. So this is naturally AMD's HEDT. And this platform, for those who don't know, stands for high-end desktop. It's essentially for the power users, not necessarily power users as in like, I want to play Doom at 4K. Instead, these are folks who maybe want to play Doom at 4K, but also want to do video editing at 4K. Perhaps do ZBrush, perhaps do a little bit of uh, 3D rendering, perhaps do a little bit of Photoshop work, and possibly doing all of that simultaneously while running a virtual machine for a Linux-based application. You just don't know. In other words, this system is designed for the high-end professional who works from home and needs a lot more power than just what eight cores can provide. This is also what Intel have been really targeting with like the Broadwell E's and like for example the 6800s and 6850s and perhaps one of the most famous processors of all especially back in the day was like the 5820k which had six cores 12 threads and was really popular with a certain group of people because of the price at the time of like the Skylakes. Anyway, I digress. The performance of this chip of course is very impressive, but naturally because of the clock speed it's not as impressive as possibly it could be, especially in single thread performance. Ultimately this chip is going to be for a certain niche of individuals, and really it's going to come down to pricing. This leaves us with a couple of very obvious questions. The first question of which is, well, what the hell is this chip actually going to be called at retail? By which I mean, is it going to be known as the Ryzen, what, 8? Ryzen 9? Ryzen 11? Is it going to be called something entirely different? Like, is it going to be called Joe Bob's Fish Burgers? We just don't know. The second thing is, what is the pricing going to be? I mean, we can presume it's going to be pretty aggressive price, but that doesn't mean much. And uh, Intel, of course, with news of like the 7740Ks, the fact that they're actually putting those on a platform which would traditionally be for the high-end desktop users as well, and the 7740s only have four cores, eight threads, it does show that Intel are being quite aggressive in terms of covering a multitude of different uh, price points with its, with its products. And of course, with the 7740K, yes, you only get the 100 megahertz base clock of boost, but because it has a higher TDP, there's a good probability it's going to be able to handle higher clock speeds, more energy into the chip. It's just going to be a very interesting next couple of years, I think, in the market, especially when you also take into account Zen Plus. Your guess, however, is as good as mine, and the results of Sysoft, excuse me, Sandra, do speak for themselves. I mean, you can do your own research on whether you know, how it stacks up to other chips, but unfortunately, just because of the clock speeds of these, we don't know if they're final. They just tell us, rather than the result itself that you should be paying attention to. Instead, to me, the, the bigger part of this news isn't the result, because ultimately it's, well, you know, engineering sample, so it's possible that the clock speeds are going to go up like 400 megahertz for the end, for the end chip. Instead, it's that AMD A, 
releasing these things, like they are looking more and more tantamount to being real, which isn't surprising given what we heard about Azrock and producing various motherboards for them. However, they were not images of the motherboard, they were only diagrams. <clears throat> so this adds f uh, extra fuel to that fire. And the second thing this does is tell us that it's not just going to be a 16-chip variant, it is also going to be running up and down the stack. Okay, so let's now discuss our friend, Vega. So, Vega has been one of the, I guess, the uh, the great mysteries in computing. There are a lot of things that we still do not know. But, uh, this does tell us some stuff. So, the information that we're starting to receive is that, well, first of all, Vega will appear in notebooks, which isn't surprisingly... Uh, we don't know whether it's going to be integrated into the APU or whether it's going to be a separate GPU, but it will definitely start appearing uh, thanks to HBM. And this means that we can start having thinner notebooks, and in theory at least those those GPUs are going to be able to provide a lot more performance for like let's say virtual reality or uh, AAA games. Now that does sound more like a dedicated GPU because if it's an APU, theoretically the size of the damn thing and complexity is probably going to become a bit of a problem, but ultimately we won't know until the product is finally released. The second thing which has popped up is that Vega will use HPM2 and there will be different capacity stacks. So according to their according to AMD, their board partners will offer different configurations. So you will have 4 gigs, 8 gigs, all those type of memory architectures to allow you to drive different games at different resolutions based upon the capacity stack that they end up using. <coughs> what does that mean? Well, theoretically, that means that you will be offered a variety of different size capacity Vega uh, chips, but it's not really going to be down to AMD to enforce a specific a requirement it's really down to the board partners themselves and what they want to offer so in theory we will start seeing like two gigabyte hbm2 stacks so that would be only four gigabytes of memory however let's be realistic now four gigabytes in the year 2017 which is probably going to be the midpoint of 2017 before these things really are like you know normal on the store shelves are you really going to want to go for a four gigabyte graphics card well Probably not. I mean, you can probably get away with it in most games, especially with the Vega technology that we're starting to see. Uh, and we did discuss this quite uh, in depth with an exclusive interview with Scott Wasson, with how uh, Vega is a lot more efficient with how it deals with memory. But at the end of the day, for even if it was like not a big deal and like one gigabyte of RAM for Vega, and it's not the case. I'm just giving a super exaggerated example. But even if Vega in reality was able to put out one gigabyte of memory and it was equivalent of like eight gigabytes on like a Polaris based architecture. Once again, it's not. It's about 50% from what is being told and it does depend upon the application and what's going on with the system. But let's even say that somehow it was an eight to one ratio. Hell, you could say it's a hundred to one ratio. The problem is it's very difficult to change public perception very quickly. Especially when, of course, NVIDIA will be saying, hey, look, our GTX blah has 8 gigabytes of whatever of RAM. So I'm not saying that the, eight, the 4 gigabytes won't have popularity. It's just going to take a while for the public to really cotton on to the fact that, you know, 4 gigabytes is enough for the Vega architecture. Assuming it is. At the end of the day, I do not have a Vega GPU at my home to test this until... You know, we do get that, and more to the point, a wider dose of people, because even if I were to have it, I might not have a certain game or a certain configuration. So, you know, there is that also to take into account. Also, AMD has told us that Vega is just around the corner. Now, how big that corner is, is kind of down to your imagination. It's like how, when soon, it's blizzard time, isn't it, pretty much? Regardless, it does tell us that the GPU is being worked on very quickly. Supposedly, the GPU uh, has most of the driver team working on it now as well. And as I discussed just a couple of days back, we started to see multiple entries into Linux driver revisions. Now, the interesting thing about this is all of them seem to be Vega 10. 
And as I said just in a couple of videos ago, where the hell is Vega 11? I mean, technically, AMD have never said, well, Vega 11 is going to release at the same time as Vega 10, but it's just, I don't know, it's just a bit weird. Like, is Vega just going to be Vega? And so we're just going to see multiple SKUs of Vega up and down the line. So, for example, we see like the 4096 uh, core Vega. We see a 3,500 an odd core Vega. We see a 3,000 an odd core Vega. We see like a, I don't know, like a 2,560 core Vega. So on and so on. Or will it actually have differential? Because we do know, of course, that the 580, the 570, the 560, and so on, are essentially going to be rebrands of the former Polaris architecture. There are a couple of differences with higher clock speed and whatever, but essentially they are the same thing. So it's just a bit weird. So we'll just have to wait until AMD do decide to release all of the information about the technology and, of course, more specifically the SKUs. This is one of the very few times I can say that we know more about the technology, we know more about the actual, you know, architecture of the GPU than we know about the GPU itself. It's one of those very few times. It's kind of weird. And... Uh, Scott Wasson, once again to bring up the interview we had with him, did tell us that they only revealed about 50% of the changes they've made for the Vega architecture. It's not just like, okay, we've taken Polaris and we've slightly tweaked it. It is very much a redesign of uh, GCN, and that's why they're calling it MCU. You know, it is essentially the next generation of um, of compute units from uh, from AMD. So let's just wait and see, I guess. Anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. It's been a bit of a shorty, as I, as you can probably tell. My voice is a bit croaky because I am still suffering from a cold. Good news, however, is that I've done all of the benchmarks from yesterday, done all the overclocking results on a GTX 1070. I am now starting to test the Cable 8 platform. And basically, I'm preparing myself for the next couple of days when I will be finishing off the MSI benchmarks. A couple of people have asked me if I can test Ryzen with uh the fury card and i can't i do not actually have a fury i've asked a couple of um a couple of uh graphics card vendors if they could send over a fury and to be honest they've either said they have no samples available or they're just not interested why well because fury is now kind of old it's like you know it, it doesn't really serve their purpose to promote a a lineup of graphics cards which isn't really even being promoted in stores anymore let's just be honest it's like you know Polaris yes the 480 is doing pretty well but everything else not so much anyway hopefully you've enjoyed the video I'll see you soon take care bye for now